This is Twit. Jason Heiner, your uh, final thoughts. Anything we missed? Any big stories that you need to tell people about? The biggest story, two, two, and I'd say one and one A. You know, number one, um, it's a, it's a, it's about transportation, right? The the stuff that's going to have the biggest impact on society yeah. will be transportation. And the number one was actually Virgin Hyperloop. One was there. They had the pod that they did that they used. They had the um, test in Nevada uh, just a few months ago that reached 240 miles an hour. And I asked them. I said, okay, so that's but the promise is going to be going seven, eight hundred. And they said, no, that was over a short distance. So that proves that it's actually going to be able to go the seven and eight hundred miles an hour. They're like, we've we've proven the technology. Now we're we're just commercializing it. And it's all about they're picking where the routes they're going to put it are and all of that. And we talked about, you know, if they had it going from um, L.A., to Las Vegas, right? How long would it take? Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be just under 30 minutes. And so wow. this, but the, the thing that they did, which I thought was good was they're, they're thinking of it not as an e, not as a, just a tube you hop in, but as a whole ecosystem. So they're making their, uh, their data available for their, um, for what they do, uh, available to other transportation systems, to Google Maps, to others, and they're taking in all of the data that these existing routes will take, right? Like there are APIs for Lyft and there are APIs for public transportation. And they're, they, does, they, they announced or what they showed off, uh, at least in private meetings, was this app that can, where you'll design your ride, right, from um, for example, from Las Vegas to Santa Monica Pier, and it'll show you the fastest the cheapest or the greenest way to get there. The and so greenest, sorry. Oh, greenest. I was like the greatest yeah. way. <laughs> well, greenest yeah. is greatest. The, the, yeah. So, so it was, um, it, it was a really good indication that they're thinking of it, you know, not just as they're putting a tube in that'll take you from one spot to one spot, but they're, they want to make an ecosystem so that as you as you get to that tube stop from Las Vegas to the Staples Center in um, in L.A., that you know, 15 minutes before you're there, it's a range in your lift ride for you if if you chose wow. that that's the, the next leg it you're going like to do. Or your metro ride. All these or things. Your metro ride, right. You're describing some very science fiction. Like a, 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 we're going to be. This is us now. This is now the future. We can open our here. trash cans with our voice, yeah. and pretty soon we'll be able to get <laughs> in L.A. to L.A. within an hour, which lots of Disneyland weekend trips. One of the things, I maybe it was Jason. Jason Calacanis told me this that uh, doesn't get covered enough with Hyperloop is that is freight delivery, mm. and in particular oh, yeah. undersea mm -hmm. yep. freight delivery, like from China to uh, L.A. Uh, via a Hyperloop instead of a 747 loaded with iPhones. Yep. Um, did they talk about that at all, or was it all passenger travel? No, it is both because obviously, you know, because we cover business a lot. We talked a lot about logistics and freight, and they say the thing is, is they can they can basically take the demand, um, understand the demand for both freight and passengers um, and use the uh, use the Hyperloop to, um, to to help balance that out, right? So that um, when there's higher demand for freight, you know, um, then they'll use that. Or again, they'll sort of say, okay, well, we've got more demand for passengers during this time, so the freight will have to go, mm -hmm. you know, on a plane or it'll have to go over land. But they're talking about that kind of coordination and data. It's all based on this kind of um, real time, um, you know, economics that that run a lot of factories and and uh, those kinds of uh, facilities now. Um, so they're definitely thinking of freight, and that's going to be a cornerstone of uh, you know of these kinds of things. Where they're going to build the first, um, what we got to, and there's a video on Tech Republic where I interviewed their CEO, talked to him about what's your roadmap going forward. Like, you know, how far is this? He says it's like two to three years. What they're wow. doing this year is they're probably likely to announce the, some of the first routes in 2018. Wow. Um, but how and they're going to go to build out those routes. I mean, isn't this yeah, a huge so, construction project? So what they're doing is they're going for the flat things. They're going to be like the monorail in Vegas or like at Disney, right? That are just flat overland routes mm. where they don't have to dig through. They don't have to dig underground. They don't have to dig through mountains where, um, if they're going through fields and, you know, private property, it's going to have a minimal impact, right? Because it's just one pylon, essentially. Um, and so uh, the first routes are going to be straight and flat. So, so you got to think places like Texas or um, they did sort of intimate that even the, the 
uh, state of Colorado is is looking at, um, you know, on the eastern side of Colorado is pretty flat. And so they're looking at some of those places where, um, you know, they may go between two of their major cities, that kind of thing. So um, those will go up quickly. You know, the really hard things where you have to go, you know, undersea and you have to go through mountains and you have to go, um, you have to do digging. You know, those are going to take more time. Those are, you know, it's the digging that's going to take all the time, not the, you know, putting up the tubes. Um, but they're there. But it's it's looking pretty real uh, over the next several years. And Is again, it going to tap into the existing infrastructure? Because like here, for example, BART goes through tunnels, BART goes under the water. That infrastructure has already been built but it's for BART right now. So I would right. imagine, like, how would this work? Because our Amtrak goes through kind of the same routes, but it's on a separate track. So is that going to have to be a third track that we have to add or maybe a fifth track? Because we have freight here too, you right. know, just, just so we can accommodate this thing. Yeah, exactly. Great question. I think I, I would expect, this is just my own speculation, right? I would expect they're going to sign some of those deals like that with some existing... Yeah train and, you know, track and tunnel, um, infrastructure to say, let's replace what you've got with newer technology mm -hmm. and create a better, you know, experience. Yeah. So they, that's just my, so it's a new, <laughs> here we go. Get ready. Okay, we're going to watch it. Belt. It's a pneumatic tube. Of course, if you're a human, you don't want it to accelerate too fast or your brains will in the, end up in the back. You, uh, <laughs> is this real? We, this is from your video on Tech Republic. Is this real? We go that fast on airplanes, right? Yeah, I mean, but uh, I guess true. so. We do. We have no idea if we're going that okay, fast. Okay, that's a good point. Right. All right. Right. So it's like an airplane, so but it's in a tube. So it be pressurized on the inside, that sort of thing? Like climate controls? Yeah, it'll controls? have to be. Yeah, like the way yeah, airplanes yeah. are. Yeah, it's sealed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's so, so funny. You know, this was Elon Musk's fever dream. And he suggested yeah. it. He just said, you know, I'm not going to do it, but, you know, somebody should build this. And there it is. I mean, in fairness, people had been working on similar things oh, okay. for, for years. I mean, oh, I think okay. he got the idea. <laughs> I think he got the idea from some things he'd seen some other oh, people work on. Oh, all right. But, but he, he distilled the thinking of yeah. it. Uh, the best, right? And and so you you have to give him credit. That's not to that's not to poo poo what Elon did and the fact that he was the one that really pushed this into the public well, consciousness. As with and everything, got it's an funding. idea whose yeah. time has come, and somebody has to catalyze yeah. it.